Tonight's Get In The Zone sponsor is Matt's Heating and Cooling. Is your home in the energy efficient zone? Call Matt's Heating and Cooling or go to callmattsheating.com to schedule your free estimate. Matt's Heating and Cooling, getting your home in the zone. We'll join in the zone by Mark Schein, Evan Skeleter, guys just coming off their broadcast games uh, tonight for WOSN, WTOW. Mark, you were at Spencerville Macomb, a... Uh, not a, not a high scoring game, but a very competitive game, as you said earlier. Competitive is a good way to phrase it, uh, Patrick. It was 14 all at halftime. Spencerville came out with two possessions in the third quarter. They ran 80 yards and scored. They ran 48 yards and scored, and they went up 28 14. Uh, Bacone scored, missed a PAT, and then Spencerville ran the clock out with that ground, eat up the game type thing, and the, the Bearcats, with 22 players healthy tonight, won a football game and move on. And definitely a great effort from them. Now, it really wasn't a surprise to see Macomb and Spencerville just grind out the ball and grind out the clock since those are teams that typically don't have the electric passing attacks that you see in other places. They're, they're pretty much ground and pound, and they showed that tonight. Well, Macomb actually threw the ball pretty well. They had to okay. at times, and they threw the ball pretty well. They also tried to do that running game, which you talked about, pretty successful in the first half. But Spencerville just rose up in the second half, and you know, we call it big boy football. They just got after it, knocked them off the line of scrimmage. Grigsby ran well, um, Smith ran well, and they had a really nice second half. They had lost another player to injury, Bowen, and hopefully they get him back next week. But uh, they struggled some with, with those types of things and new players and new positions and moving people around, but enough to win tonight. I think they lost an official. They did. We had, we had an official get rolled up on. Uh, the, the umpire, right in the middle of the play, was on a, a return type thing, got rolled up on, and he spent the rest of the game on the bench and finished with four officials. So it was kind of that type of night tonight. Lots of injuries, lots of penalties, and that type of night. Another game that we'll uh, have for you, and we had Lipstick taking on Antwerp, and Evan with the call on that one. And, you know, Antwerp, first of all, kind of, a, kind of an interesting story. They hadn't won a playoff game in 20 years. Then they win last week against Waynesfield Goshen. And now they're, they're further in the playoffs than even they thought. When I talked to Coach Jason Hale a couple weeks ago, he said, well, you know, we're not sure. It depends on kind of everything works out, but we feel like we're really close to winning a game. And they, they came out and they scored first on Lipsick tonight, but Lipsick just really seemed to take control after that. They did. They scored first. Um, the score was actually 14-13 to 13 in favor of Lipsick with a minute left in the second quarter. So this was a close competitive game for a little bit. Um, and then Lipsick just turned it on. They're a great team. Uh, they showed a lot of class. Uh, Lorenzo Walther, uh, I don't know if you've gotten to see, either of you have seen him run the ball this year. Um, the dude's a man. I mean, this guy was throwing stiff arms. He was throwing guys back five yards on stiff arms, lowering shoulders down. I mean, um, he was incredible. Lipsick did a great job keeping the ball on the ground, especially in the second half. They scored the points they needed, ultimately winning 41-13. to 13. But hey, Antwerp is a, a young team with a lot of promise. Their quarterback, Carson Ultimus, only a freshman. Uh, the guy that scored two touchdowns tonight, Parker Moore, catching the ball, he's only a sophomore. Uh, this is a young team with a lot of promise. That was a big win last week against Waynesfield Goshen, a team that I thought would put up a fight even against Lipsick this week. Um, knocked them off, and, and they've done a nice job. So uh, Antwerp, definitely a team to look out for in the future. And it seemed like in the very beginning of that game, you saw that a little bit where Antwerp really felt like they had some confidence that they weren't just going to get their doors blown off by Lipstick. They felt like they could play. They felt like they could hang with them. And when they scored that first touchdown, because I was there on the sideline, and you saw the Lipstick coaches kind of get around and go, hey, what, what's going on here, guys? Although yeah. they didn't say it like that. Let's, what's going on here, guys? What, we, let's, let's focus. Let's get in our game plan. And it seems like the Lipstick really did that moving forward. They did. They did. Ultimus, uh, again, he threw two great touchdown passes. Uh, Lipstick maybe a little shell-shocked. Then Lipstick started uh, having some interceptions, getting some turnovers, capitalizing on the turnovers, and really settled into their own game. I think they got that confidence back. They scored two touchdowns in the last minute of the second quarter, and that's a killer if you're a team trying to, to beat someone that may be favored. Um, and, yeah, Lipstick really rode that momentum to the end. Wrapping up our time here tonight. So uh, one question that I posed to you gentlemen earlier in the week. So this season has been a little unique, of course, for a variety of reasons. One of them being the every football team was allowed to get into the playoffs. As long as they opted in, they were able to get a slot in the tournament. And I asked you gentlemen what you thought of the all-in system. Is it something that should be standard in football playoffs? They're going to expand it to 12 teams this season anyway before all this started is the is the all-in format 
as in everyone gets in, not everyone puts their effort in. <laughs> yeah. is, that, is that good for football? Is that bad for b football? Is that something that needs to, to stay or does it well, need to go, Mark? Patrick, I'd, you. I'd rather not see that. And the reason is it takes away from your league. You know, you know when you got a, the Western Buckeye League plays nine games. The MAC plays eight games. The, the bigger leagues, you can't play everybody. And congratulations to Northwest Conference to come up with a way to find a league champion. But they didn't play everybody, and I think that's wrong. I think every school in the league should play every school in the league when you have that opportunity. And the other thing is, already, before we started expanding the playoffs, you had to play 15 weeks in a row to be a state champion. We don't ask college guys, we don't ask the professional guys to do that. So to increase that season even more, I would be opposed to that. So you're thinking if we did that, if we had every team go in, by definition, the season would just get that much longer just because we have to fit all these other games in. We, we, if we're going to get all the league games in, right. then the season has to go much, much longer. And if we sacrifice leagues, I, I'd just rather not do it. Evan, your thoughts? Well, let's put logistics aside. Let's say we are able to play a full 10-week schedule and put every team in the playoffs and play the, the full playoff schedule. It still doesn't work out, okay? You, you know, you think about basketball. Every team makes the playoffs. Uh, basketball is a game that's conducive to upsets and Cinderella stories. It's, especially in high school basketball, there's no shot clock, right? So theoretically, a, a team that's undermanned or undermatched could keep the ball and uh, keep the game close, mm -hmm. etc. But in football, the cream rises to the top. Okay, you're going to have a team like Marion Local playing a team with maybe zero or one or well one or two wins in the second round of the playoffs. And that's just number one. It, I hate to put it this way, but it's kind of a waste of time um, f for Marion Local. And you're risking injury to a team that really shouldn't be playing a playoff game against a team that's that has two wins. I mean, we saw tonight, you know, Arlington, they got out to a what, 42 to zero lead after the first quarter or, or near the sec beginning of the second quarter. It's games like that that uh, we're going to see a lot of those if we put every team in the playoffs. I I'd love to give every team a chance, and maybe we do expand the playoffs a little bit because I do think each year there are a couple yeah. teams that maybe didn't get the points they needed to get into the playoffs but still stand a chance against some of those teams. But putting every team in the playoffs I just don't think works out. Like Here's that. what I would do, Evan. I would put every team in the playoff that has meatloaf sandwiches like they do <laughs> at Riverdale with the That's bacon right. on the top and the provolone cheese and that sauce they put on. You guys get in the playoffs. If you don't have something like that. Look, his last name is Shine. I've never seen him shine brighter than when he brought up that plate and took his first bite of that sandwich. Wonderful. It was impressive. The media tournament, if we set it up, will look entirely based on <laughs> what teams feed us the best when we're out calling these games. One more thing I want to call your attention. So 274 games played in the first round. 130 of them, that's 47% decided by 30 or more points. That's 130 games that had running clock. So you have the nice stories like Antwerp, but it just kind of looking at the numbers overall, it's like, we're, it doesn't seem like that we're serving anybody, either the kids or the teams or anything like that by e expanding the playoffs. As nice of an idea as it sounds kind of on its face. Yep, agreed. And even those stats, you still had teams with bye weeks that didn't play that week, that if they would have played some of those, those other teams, it just would have been a disaster. Mark Schein, Evan Skillerter, guys, thank you so much, Thanks and we appreciate your time.